Um, we're going to be starting in a few minutes. And I just want to make sure um, everyone gets set up beforehand. Um, I am going to um, be giving you guys some advice um, for cleanup and um, how to get dispose of the paint that you are using, which is acrylic. And uh, we are also going to um, talk a little bit about the painting and break it down into pieces so you understand what um, I'm asking for for this um, this painting. So um, so I am going to switch it over, turn it around. Um, and while we're waiting for a few more people, I am going to um, share this with Facebook. So I'll be sharing this with my Facebook account um, so that we make sure that everybody knows um, what to expect. While I'm doing that, you can pour your paint. Hi, Kaden. How are you? Um, you are going to be uh, using blue, yellow, and red, and then you're also going to be using white. We'll be using a lot of white today. Go. Okay, I will be back in just one second so that I can share it with Facebook. All right, so if you have any comments or you need to uh, talk to me at any point, all you have to do is just put a little message like Caden did. One of my former students who goes to another school, and I hope he is still painting, hopefully. Um, and maybe he's painting with us today. Um, you will need a sponge brush or some sort of flat brush. Uh, you will need a, like kind of like a pointy brush and a, a smaller square brush. I'm strip that in there. And you might need some water so you can clean up after yourself. All right. Um, so with this painting, it it's um, a series of big flowers, and it's also a series of these um, these leaves. Hi, mom. How are you? My mom is here today. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Um, hopefully, she got the paint I gave her. Um, she was running out of yellow, so I wanted to make sure that she got the yellow paint. Um, so we're going to have a background first, and then we're going to start layering it backwards. So we're not going to be painting these big flowers until later. So we're going to start with the leaves first, and then we're going to be working our way out. Okay? Nice. I'm glad that, uh, that kids are watching this too. Thank you for sharing um, this with your kids. And I can't wait to see your paintings that you do at the end. So when you're done with your paintings, um, please send them to me because I want to see what you guys come up with. All right. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, what I used was a light green. Um, but you guys can use any color you wish. You don't have to use light green. You can even use black if you want to. Um, but you have to make sure that you put a coat down where you can paint on top of it later. So don't go too thick with your coats, um, especially for the background and, and starting it out. You want to make sure that it's pretty thin. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to do a light green for my background. I've been doing a lot of light green for the backgrounds, but I guess I really, really like this color. So this is the color that I'm going to spread over the whole entire background. So go ahead and start doing some sort of background right now. Um, one thing that I uh, wanted everybody to know, I do these paint nights or paint days or afternoons because I know a lot of you are bored you don't have anything to do um, and there's and some people have never painted before so these are for people who have never painted before uh, some people who have painted before if if you want to um, 
see different kind of techniques or whatever. But this is pretty novice stuff. So it's beginner level stuff. So um, I do these so that I could share stuff with the community. Um, the community in the world. We have people from um, out of the country participating. Um, and yeah, that's why I'm doing these. And I hope you guys are finding enjoyment doing these. I like doing these because I think it takes me out of my own world for a little bit, not having to just be um, working on my own art by myself at home. And some days I wouldn't even be painting if I wasn't doing this, so this forces me to keep my practice going, which is a great thing. Um, everybody who is an artist should be practicing every day, um, even if it's just a quick five, 10 minute drawing. Um, but the more you practice, the better you'll be. Um, I've noticed that I have, I'm a little rusty on my drawing skills. I've been working with my students and just a little rusty with what I need to do to help um, do a tutorial with them. So that's something that you can take into account. So I'm going to look and see if there's any little notes. Oh, we have neighbors. Cool. Great. I'm glad you guys are all ready to go and painting already. So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. Um, as it's drying, I'm going to be going over the way in which to make um, <laughs> to make the leaves. Mom, I see you don't have the yellow paint yet. I'm sorry. I ordered it a week ago, and I thought it would get there in time, but I think it's going to get there on Monday. So I guess we'll just have to use yellow next week. But you don't have to use yellow for this painting. Okay, you can use another color. Um, if at any point you are um, needing to go back and review something that I've said or just something that I've done, you could do that. That's There's an option for that on this. Okay, so I'm gonna go get a piece of paper so I can paint on that. So the basic part of the leaf that we're going to be doing, and you can use any brush you want with this, but you have to make sure that it's a loaded brush, meaning you have a lot of paint inside that brush. Um, so I'm going to start with a very simple one, um, and then I'll come back and we'll do the same thing where I'm showing you how to do it without the whole painting. That might get in the way. So we're going to do like a little leaf that is pretty green. Oh, I wanted to go over something with you before that. Um, a lot of you are probably using a palette, which is great. Um, I would advise you not to wash it or put it down the sink if you poured a lot of paint. Instead, let it dry in your palette and you can peel the paint. My students do this in class. They love it. Um, and then you can make something out of this. So one thing that we did a few um, months ago when it was February in uh, one of our clubs is we took the underside that you get, like let's say like we're looking at this part, if you flip it over, it's so colorful and pretty. You can cut into this and make things. You can make stickers, you can make um, magnets, you can make other things so it doesn't go to waste. So I have mine in a little container that I'm holding on to and I have a container at school. A lot of the kids come in while, while we're painting and they like to um, peel the paint. They say it's so satisfying. So 
if you want to do that, that's great. I would rather you do that than pour it down the sink. Okay, so here we go. This is the basic leaf shape. You can use a sponge brush. Okay. Or you can use a round brush. And you might want to test this out to see what you like the best. I think I like this one better than that one. Um, the longer ones we might have to use as the bigger sponge brush. Uh, we're just going to make these floating leaves that do not attach to anything uh, for our first set of leaves. We're going to be making a few of these um, in various parts of the canvas, but they're going to be different colors. But basically it's just an almond shape. And then you, al you also want to make sure that you're pulling your brush the entire time. So when you're painting, you always want to pull your brush. Pull your brush. Um, pulling your brush would be going this way too. If you start doing this, it's going to be uh, less control and you aren't going to get a really sharp edge like you would want. So there we go. So this is the first one that we're going to do. You guys can choose whatever color you want. If you want to make these blue leaves, you can. If you want to make these pink leaves, go for it. If you want to make these bright yellow, you can. Depending on what you did in the background, that is your choice. Okay, so let's make leaves. The first set of leaves that we're going to have um, are going to come down in this direction right here. And I'm going to use that pretty dark green color. And I'm going to be pulling the brush. So I'm going to start, I'll start here. Okay, there was one. Might need to move this around. Try to make them close together so they look like they are joined, but um, they're not going to be, we're not going to make a little line in it because that, that is a little bit challenging for people, especially people who are just starting out. So we're just making these shapes. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to look and see any comments that you have and, and I will make suggestions as you might need them. So I'm just filling this up. I'm gonna bring it all the way down, creating this invisible line. Hopefully everybody's having a good day. Today I had a little event that my tri team put on. Uh, we did um, social a social distancing triathlon, um, team triathlon. So we had people doing the bike, we had people doing run, um, and then we had people doing swim. I started my swim at seven this morning and then I did the, I did a run as well. So that was really fun. I want my leaves to be almost really a little more round. I think this might be a little bit cuter. So I'll leave that like that. I'm gonna bring it down. Now, any leaf that we put down, um, if you don't like it, we can go over it later with another leaf. Because this painting is so layered, it has lots of different types of leaves. It has uh, big leaves and small leaves. What you could do is, like, let's say you have a weird leaf right here and you don't like it. We could put a big one that's dark in front of it and we won't be able to see it. So we're hiding our mistake by... Um, making a, another um, part of the painting or another leaf on top of it. Um, okay, so I have a set of leaves down here. 
I'm going to wait for a little bit and I'm going to put a, another set of leaves up here that kind of rotate down like this. And I'll give you some time to catch up. Oops, sorry about that. I didn't notice it was all the way down. Okay, I see somebody is, in, oh, Tristan. Hi, Tristan, how are you? Are you gonna be drawing with us today or painting? That's one of my sixth graders that I have. He's gonna be in seventh grade next year. And I thought you had a different web or uh, YouTube. I'm good. How are you? It's nice to see you're here today with me. I like the emoji, the little peace sign emoji. Okay, so there aren't any questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the painting down a little bit. So if you needed to see this a little bit longer, you can take a picture of it and then um, then you can look at it a little bit longer. Um, we're going to bring some um, leaves down here. Oh, did you just get your order? All right, and I'm going to start first. I'm going to bring it down like this. I'm going to start first by just pulling the brush. It's really yellow. Hopefully you're listening to music. I've, I'm listening to music in my headphones right now. A little sound garden. I might have to go back over these because I can't, I can see through this. And I don't really like that part of it. Um, if at any point something isn't drying, you can use a hair dryer. So I have a hair dryer here. It's mostly for my watercolor. Um, but my students in class, they have they have um, access to our hair dryer. Typically it's going on all the time when we're using acrylic. Sometimes they like to put glue on their hand and then use the hair dryer to dry their hand so that they can peel it off. Just like the paint. And they say, oh, it's so satisfying. <laughs> kind of change the color a little bit. Now that I have this done, I don't really like the way that it looks as far as it being together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down a little bit with uh, the leaf. So if you did something like that too, what you could do is you can just add a little bit more to it in order to make it look like it's connected without making that line. If you want to make a line, like a really fine line, 
to connect them, that's an option. But that's up to you. You are the artist today. You get to figure out how you would want to paint your painting. And guess what, everybody? Nobody is looking at your painting. So if you don't want to share it, you don't have to. This is about um, this is about the process. So if this painting doesn't turn out very well, it's okay. You can put acrylic paint all over it and repaint on it. It's what I do with a lot of these. I reuse them. Please do not throw canvas away. You can always reuse it. All right, and I can go back over this later at a, another point. I'm gonna wait a minute while you guys catch up for mustard. Womp womp. Oh, that's nice. All right, um, I'm gonna put this off to the side because I wanna go over the next thing that we're gonna do. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a series of leaves that are going in this direction. We're also gonna do a series of leaves going in this direction and leaves going in this direction. And we are going to remember that we have a flower here and a flower here. Um, now, Maybe you guys can't see the other flower. Uh, a flower here and a flower here. Now, um, I'm going to be putting like a little circle where my flowers are going to be. You could do that if you'd like to. Um, but I'm going to do that so I can remember where everything is. And that helps me with my final composition. I have to paint on a smaller canvas because it's... I don't have a lot of room in here and makes it a little easier to finish our paintings. All right, so my red flower will be here, okay? Just, just to have it there. My large white flower will be right here, okay? Make it a little larger. We're also going to have, um, actually we'll leave that one out. Um, so we're going to leave the big flower that I had back here because it's a little harder to paint. So if you want to put another flower here, you can. I'm going to change the composition around. I'm going to put another flower here. And just to balance it out, I'll put a little flower right here. All right. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go back over that. I think that's fine. We'll leave it. Okay, so we're going to start up here um, with these types of leaves. Let me get my piece of paper out so you can see what I'm talking about. These leaves are a lot longer. Um, if you want to use like a paler green, that might look nice. Or a blue green. Ooh, let's do that. I'm going to do a blue green. I'm going lighter with the first sets of leaves. So if you don't like it, you can't really see them as well as the ones that are gonna be darker. So long leaves that have a little point at the end. So this is where it would be connecting to the plant and the leaf. If you want to make it so that it is has dimension and have some white on the other side, you could do that. Um, so yeah, that's the basic leaf that we're gonna do. We're also gonna do kind of a curvy leaf um, and another part of the canvas. So one thing that I like to do is take a brush stroke and then press hard and then twist the brush and then it turns into that sort of leaf. If that isn't something that you feel comfortable doing, all you have to do is just make the line and go in that direction. Or you can go 
little line, thick line, little line, and then you have your leaf. And you can fix the edges. Okay. So if you need to take a picture of that, you can. But we're going to get started on making these leaves. If at any point you need to move your canvas around, let's say you need to move it this way in order to paint, you can. But I'm going to keep it the direction of the painting just because I know I'm going to throw some people off with flipping it around. Um, so yeah, here we go. We're going to make some big, like gray-ish blue. And I'm loading my brush, meaning I'm getting a lot of paint in it. I'm going to start first by just touching the canvas, and then I'm going to press down and then lift up. And then fill it in if I need to. And we can go back over this if we need to as well. Are any of you making these paintings for Mother's Day? That'd be nice. I don't think my mom wants my painting though. This painting. She doesn't need this one. <laughs> I have a lot of paintings at her house already. They almost look like feathers. Those are pretty. I like them. Okay, and I'm going to keep going around. Press down. And you kind of want to extend the leaves so that they go inside the circle because we're going to go over this later. Of paint on that side and if you hate these it's okay because we're gonna go back over them um, and layer them with some other leaves so think of this as practice you're practicing these leaves because later on we're gonna be make, repeating the same sort of brush stroke and um, you will have the opportunity to kind of like go over the ones that you despise or just don't like very much. <laughs> um, I things are drying a little bit fast today. It's pretty warm and um, I have my lamp really close to me. I'm a little sweaty. All right, so I'm gonna let those ones dry. I'm gonna start some over here. I'm gonna put some over here. Maybe this, it will go underneath this one over here. Um, and then I'll wait for a little while while other people catch up. So this, I'm gonna make ones that are a little bit larger than I've been doing. So just really pressing in and then making another brush stroke. If you wanna use other colors for this, go for it. It's up to you. It's a little bit easier to pull this brush stroke than going this direction. So if you need to flip your canvas around at any point, do that. Um, if you notice, this part right here at the end is very, very narrow. What I did was I twisted the brush at the end. So, like, if I want to do that 
two here. I just twist it and then pull it down a little bit. Okay, so I like that leaf. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit too dark for what I need right there, so I'm just going to go over it with another light color. I'm going to do a series of leaves here in this direction. I didn't have that in the initial painting, but I feel it necessary to do a few there. So I'm going to go press and then lift, press and then lift. I'm gonna let this rest for a minute um, while you guys catch up and I'm gonna fix some of these actually I'm gonna fix some of these leaves right here and then um, I'm gonna let you guys catch up just because I don't really like these ones right now and if um, you like the leaves that you are working with what you could do is you can go back over these ones if you like to, or you can paint the edges of your canvas while you're waiting for me and waiting for others to be finished. I paint really fast. Um, and if I'm painting too fast for you, just say slow down. Tristan's told me to slow down before on a painting. totally fine with doing that because I don't know what is going on in your house. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this sit and I'm going to go turn on the air conditioning because I'm really warm right now. So I'm going to push this over to the side. It almost looks like a, a dream catcher right now. Let me see if you guys said anything. Um, yeah, that is the parchment paper. Okay, wait. You are saying something else. Let me. Yes, I will um, show you the next time I mix the paint. Um, in a second. So I'm going to turn the air conditioning on, come right back, and show you. It's warm in here. So um, for those of you who don't know um, what colors make what, so green is made with yellow and blue, and then orange is red and yellow, and then violet would be yellow, uh, would be red and blue. I think I'm a little tired from doing my race today. Okay, um, so I think I'm gonna move on. Um, I'm gonna make a big leaf right here, like really, really big, and maybe another one here, and I'll make a few more. So I'm gonna use um, a kind of a light green. So I have my blue and my yellow. You always wanna, when you're mixing paint, you always want to mix um, the darker color into the lighter color. So you take the darker color, mix it into the lighter color. You don't want to do the other way around or else it will take your whole lot of paint. So then I took that color, mixed it with the white, 
And what happens is it turns into this like minty type green. But um, I want to make sure that you're aware that, that whenever you're mixing a tint, you always take the color and put it into the white. And I'm not mixing all of my white because I want to use all of my paint. So there you go. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and make a big leaf here. And if it goes into the other areas, that's fine. Oh, and then if you don't like something in your piece, you can always use a flower and put a flower on it. That would be cool. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of blue and kind of section it off a little bit. So I just put a stroke of blue and then went on the side. So then that gives it a little dimension. pulling some of this color because I don't like the edge that I made. Thank you for asking questions, you guys. I, like I said, I don't know what you need unless you tell me. So here we go. I got a little minty green going. Here we go. If you want to make sound effects, go for it. Whenever I'm drawing for my kiddos, I make sound effects and I make them make the sound effects back. It's pretty funny. Well, it's funny to me. I don't, I don't know if they think it's funny. But I don't think that they're really thinking too much about it. It's, it's just a fun interaction. Can you tell that I miss teaching? Because I do. All right, so I'm gonna take some of that minty color again, and I'm just gonna make another leaf going in this direction. Okay, I made that one a little lighter. I like that color, I'm gonna leave it. Happy accident, right? Cool. And then maybe I'll make that another leaf here. Okay, if any, at any point you need to go back over some areas because you don't really like them that much, go for it. This is the time to do it. I'm gonna wait a few minutes um, while you guys catch up. I'm just gonna touch up a few things. It's not really anything poignant for me to tell you. And the way you would clean your brush, and you can see that's kind of dirty, is you would um, take your brush, hit it at the bottom of your gloss. Don't, don't make it so that it turns into, um, like this. Just make it so that it's hitting, hitting it and pushing down so you're getting some of that paint out. And then you can go rinse it off if you need to. I'm going to go do that right now. You always want to make sure that your brushes are dry when you're doing this type of painting unless you're trying to do some glazing. Um, my brush wasn't really dry when I started doing these leaves so I kind of regret that. But it's okay. I can always go over it later. Doop, doop, doop. We are now going to do another set of leaves. Think of these as another set of practice leaves. Um, they have to be different colors. So if you use like a light blue up here, you're gonna have to use maybe a, a light green or a darker green up here. 
And then if you used green down here, then you're gonna have to use maybe a lighter blue or, you know, you can even use like a mauve color, like a, a red, a, a purplish pink color if you would like to. Um, so we'll start first with these ones up here. I really don't like the way that um, there's like dry brush that is really, I don't like it very much. So I might go over it later, but I can try to fill it up too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix a dark green with no added uh, white to it. And I'm going to make some more leaves. Uh-oh, that has too much yellow in it. There we go. If you wanna go in this direction, you can just like pull it down. That's a little bit better. have to add a little bit of white to this because I can see through it and I don't like that. That one's pretty, so I'm ready to move on. Good practice leaf, right? Thank you guys for painting with me today. Makes me feel a little connected, which is awesome. This one's gonna go off the canvas. One thing that I like to do with my paint nights when, I, when it's in the community and I'm hanging out with people, um, is I try to make people paint something different than I'm doing. Um, you guys all have strengths in different parts of your painting abilities and some of the things that I do might not really look very nice on your painting so um, change it up. If you're finding like a way to paint something and you really really like it, do that. You don't have to do everything that I do. And if yours um, looks way different than mine, I am totally fine with that. I think that's cool. You took a risk and you did um, something different, which is awesome. And that's something that we should all do in the world. Take a few risks, right? Risk takers. Okay, I'm going to put one big one over here. Just by pushing down. Cool. All right. I'm going to put a few big leaves over here. Maybe go in a different direction. Oh, I kind of like it going down. So I'll do one here. It's so much easier to pull the paint, guys. So if you need to turn your canvas around, that would be great. Like the, I like these leaves a lot better than those ones because I could do that. Adding a little bit of white to this one because I can't, so I can see through it. Hopefully everybody's keeping hydrated. It's getting hot out there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna do a few leaves over here. I 
picked up some red. That one's pretty. Do that to this one too. So I need some blue leaves over here because I have a lot of blue up here. So I need some blue leaves coming down. Um, in a painting, you want to try to keep it in balance, balance in color and um, shape. So we ha that's why I did um, a um, circle over here for a flower. A big circle kind of balances out, especially if it's closer to the center. Um, then I have a flower over here and then I needed to add another flower over here to keep it balanced. Okay, so we need some bluish color leaves. So I'm doing, I still have a dirty brush, um, so I'm going to mix it. And I can go ahead and Start pulling, push down, pull. That's a pretty color. It might it's it's a little bit uh, too close in value to this one. If that happens to you, what you can do is you can um, add a little bit of a color, and that will. I just added a darker um, value of that. I'm gonna do another one. I'm using a lot of white for this painting, guys. Ooh, that's a pretty leaf. Too similar in value, so let's go ahead and add a little red to this one. You guys might think I'm a little nuts, but that's pretty. Okay, in a minute, I'm gonna check and see if you guys need anything. Um, but I, I need to fix a few leaves beforehand. That's a pretty color. I'm going to do another leaf that color. So I just added a little bit of red to that. It's almost brown. So uh, primary colors mixed together, a brown, or um, another word would be a neutral color. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start up here, push down, pull. If any of you are just taking notes before you start actually painting, because I know some of you are doing that out there, I'm gonna add another one up here. Um, you can pick a part of the painting that you like and just paint that. You don't have to paint the whole entire thing. Uh, some of you might think that this is a little overwhelming because we're doing so many leaves and so many brush strokes. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and do that. I really like this color, so I'm putting it other places. And I don't like this leaf right there. I'll be going over that one later. Okay, I will stop. <laughs> there we go. So I'm gonna stop for a second, let you guys catch up, answer questions if you need it. Um, and then uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna start with the flowers. Oh no, sorry. We have one more set of leaves that we need to do and then we'll start with the flowers.
And this set of leaves, um, they're really dark, so make sure you have black poured into your palette. Um, unless you're gonna use a different color, but I suggest something dark because you want it to be, um, have some contrast. We did a lot of light pastel -y colors. We need some uh, colors that have higher contrast and that are uh, more, have more value. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it has the, the entire color. you can comment and let me know if you are ready to go with a thumbs up in the comment that would be great um, I'll wait a few minutes for you guys and then if I don't get any responses I'll say, say it again but put a thumbs up in the comments so I know that you are ready to go To try to make this a little bit higher next time. You should see my setup. It's pretty ridiculous. Is anybody ready to go? Okay, I'll fix some of these leaves while I wait. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Linda is my aunt in Montana. She's painting with us today because she likes this painting. Okay, great. Um, so the last set of leaves that we're going to be doing, um, you're going to use a darker color. We're going to be doing, I'm going to do like a blue, a blue, um, violet and black mix. Uh, so that it's not just pure black or pure black. Uh, so I'm going to take this paper and show you um, one of them that has the stem. If you don't like, you can practice it on a piece of paper if you like. Um, if you don't like the stem that you have, you can, uh, sorry, it's hard to do stuff and talk at the same time. Um, if you don't like the stem on this piece of paper, you don't have to put it in there. Some of you have a hard time with making a line. Um, I hear all the time, can't even draw a straight line. Okay, a lot of a lot of people can't use a, or draw a straight line. That is um, what rulers are for. So I'm doing something that I told you not to do. Um, mixing a lighter color with a darker color, but I just I didn't want my all my black to be over there. Okay. So I like that color and that's the one I'm going to use. Um, what you could do first is just lightly, just lightly um, make a line, okay, and just pull it down. And then what you, you'll do is you'll make the same leaves that we've been making. Done them a little bit more. Oh goodness, I'm doing more talking than I've done all week. I don't tend to talk that much in class either, but so this is the leaf that we'll do. Set of leaves. I don't like how that one's touching. I like this one better. I'm gonna aim for this one right here as I work. Um, another one that we'll do 
It's basically the same leaf that we've been doing, but a different color. All right, so now that we went over that one, we are gonna go ahead and take our canvas right back. And then we get to hide some of these leaves that we don't like. All right, so first set of leaves up here. Um, well, I'll, I'll go over these ones later. So we'll do this, the one that I showed you. I'm gonna go like this and bring a line straight down. It's a little wobbly, but in nature things are wobbly too. So I have that and I'm gonna go ahead and make my leaf. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm going over this. Now what happens when you have this really, really dark leaf over the other ones, it starts making it and gives the illusion of depth, even though all of these brush strokes are pretty flat. be going over that one with a flower a lot of times in my um, my paint night classes people use the photo um, that I have on the website that we have for the night and put it um, on their phone and they look at it while we paint because sometimes when you're looking at something far away you wouldn't be able to see it so if there's any point you need to refer back to the painting that I have you can but I'm kind of not really I'm going off it to an extent but not completely that might frustrate some of you but I, I don't really repeat myself too much because I tend to do things different always. I don't know why, but I do. these set of leaves are so pretty because I practice them with the other ones and yeah and they went over some of the leaves I did not like cool all right so if you like this one we can go ahead and put it over here we can put it over here actually let's make it go like this that would be pretty um, so I'm gonna move the canvas just a little bit for my sake. I bet you guys can grasp what's going on here. Um, and then I might go to the other side of my table so that I can paint the other ones. Um, so we'll start here. Just the tip of the brush stroke and bring it where you want it to go. So pretty. And you know, don't be so hard on yourselves when you're painting too. Some of you have never painted before. Um, so if you make a mistake, it's not gonna be your last painting. Well, hopefully it's not your last painting, but an artist thinks, oh, well, this is not my last painting. I'm gonna be painting another painting another day. So I have plenty of paintings that don't sell because people don't buy them or I just don't like them so I hold on to them so that I can either repurpose them for another art project or somebody else might like it and take it that happens a lot 
painting giveaway. Are any of you um, painting with just black? That will be cool. He's turning a little bit black. My muse just walked in. Oh, Tiggy. That's my doggy. He's not sitting in his chair. He's sitting on my floor. Waiting patiently. Alright. This is starting to look good now. All paintings look bad in the beginning. Right? <laughs> That's why people don't really like to show their process. Like, mm -hmm. You're not really going to get it until you start seeing the final parts of it. But we're still not done at all. Um, if you have some of the canvas peeking through, you might have to go in it in a few different directions. I am seeing that with this painting. Um, I'm looking at it on the side. I'm over here. I can't really see what you all are seeing right now, but um, yeah, it's my view is distorted. But that's okay. When you're painting, you should probably paint on it. Um, using a an easel that works the best. I'm going to be continuing these paint nights. Um, if you have a suggestion of what you would like to paint, please let me know. I reused this painting because I had it from another paint night and got a little busy with work. Uh, this week and um, with other things I have a paint gig that I will tell you once it, the contract goes through um, a little bit later that looks pretty so um, what I just did right there is I went back over it with a little bit of red so I'm going to do that and I'm going to mix it in. Kind of gives it a another depth layer element, whatever you want to call it. It's a little fuzzy on the edges. Yeah, if it goes through, I will let you know next week, and I'll let you know what it is. But I, I don't really have a clear idea yet, so it'll be a surprise, everyone. But yeah, if you want to... Um, come up with an idea or if you search for a few online um, and send them to me I can break down the painting and figure it out and then we can paint it together so that's something that you can do but it has to be something that I think people would, would be successful when stress people out um, especially the new people who are new to painting um, so yeah, we can go over that later. Um, yeah, okay. So um, next what we're gonna do is um, paint similar leaves to these ones here. We're gonna bring them down off of this flower that we have. So load that brush up, put a lot of paint in it. We'll go to where the flower is gonna be Make it really thin, thick, thin. If you need to go in the other direction, you can. Let's see. Okay. 
we're gonna make one that is a little bit shorter than the last one. Oh, he's sitting in his chair now. I'll show you guys in a second. So, um, Tig, my four-year-old puppy, Tig is not a puppy. He has a chair in my studio, and then Rune has one too. We, I don't sit in them. I sit in my really uncomfortable chair that I really should replace, but I tend to sit and then I go and lay on my floor and I don't really stay in one position too long. Okay. So I'm going to let this one dry for a little bit uh, while you guys are working. And um, I think I'm going to go over and sit on the other side so you can see uh, the other part. So I don't flip my canvas over. Please um, make a comment if you need any help. Yes, parchment paper. Yeah, you can use printer paper. You can use newspaper uh, to practice on anything. You can use cardboard. If you're painting on cardboard, I am so proud of you. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to paint on cardboard because they don't think it's as good but cardboard is awesome um it's a good way to start painting last week i had a few of my teacher friends participate and um and one of my vice principals participate and they used um they used foam board so that's an option too and it's cheaper so so yeah Oh, take left. So I'll show him a little later if he comes back. All right. So the leaves up here are going to be similar to the ones that we've already painted in these ones too. So you're just going to load your paintbrush up. A lot of paint. And let's see, I don't like this one. This one's not the cutest to me. So I'm gonna go blue. And it's dry. It's dry in the area right now. It's supposed to rain this week. So it's supposed to rain wherever everybody else is. Montana, Florida, we have somebody from Florida, Eileen. Hopefully she's here right now. Let's see, we'll make three leaves. I don't know um, anyone else who is here with me today, so I just see of my former and present students and then I have um, a few family members that I know of and then friends of friends and a few friends in here um, but we all live in California okay that one's better now that we've put those down I noticed that off to the side, you can see through my canvas. This is a brand new canvas, it shouldn't be doing this. I guess I should have painted a little bit thicker with my first initial brush strokes. check that out what I'm doing is just going back over okay and I see through this one these almost look like feathers so pretty 
being kind to yourself while you're painting. Because you have to train yourself to paint. So if you're not really training that often, it might not look as good as you want it right to right now, but the next painting will be better if you paint with me again. Or if you paint alone, or if you paint with somebody else. Okay, so this is pretty balanced um, in color, in leaves. Uh, we might go over it uh, with like light leaves at the end. Um, so make sure you hold on to your white. Yeah, we'll do that because I need, I need to put some yellow leaves in there because I think that will be pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna wait a few minutes while you guys are still working on your leaves and then we're going to, um, we're gonna start working on our flowers. Okay, so let's check and see what everybody says about the weather. Lots of rain last night. Cool. Oh, it's in the 70s. That's pretty hot today here. I wonder, I wonder how hot it is. I can tell that it's warm because of the way everything is drying. Got a lot of messages from my triathlete friends right now. Okay. So today it's 91 right now. Yikes. It'll be 93 at 6. And then Monday it's going to rain. It's going to rain through Thursday, hopefully. And then the following week, too. Crazy. Um, thumbs up or you can type thumbs up if you're ready to start working on those flowers you'll need a clean sponge brush or a big um, big brush for this Okay, here we go. We're going to start. So you're gonna need a lot of white for this. You're gonna need a lot of white for this. So make sure that you have, um, you have white in your palette. Okay, so what you're gonna do is um, you're just gonna go over the areas that you're going to be painting uh, for your flowers. And one of the reasons why we have to do this initially is so that we have we have the placement, the scale of what it is going to be. Okay, we have that one. I'm gonna make this one white too. So that just gives you an idea of where those things are laid. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do really, really light pink for the next two. And I'm gonna go over what I've done a little bit more to make them a little bit exaggerated and large. So now you understand why we have to paint those leaves first because going around this is too challenging. I wouldn't want you to be stressed out about this. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. The light pink, 
if you want to make yellow flowers you can do that you can also make different flowers if you want to lots of options it's a limitless right okay so um, with this flower, um, it is, and let me go over how to do it first. So I'm going to put this off to the side, let it dry a little bit while we start working with it. So what it is, is a series of brush strokes that turn. And you see how I'm moving my sponge brush? It'd be the same thing if I was just using a regular brush. So you'd be like, and if you're using a really, really small canvas, um, you don't want to be using a sponge brush. So those of you who have like six by six canvases, you want to make sure that they are, that you're using a smaller brush than I am. So use the tools that you need. Um, so let's go ahead and try it out. So we are, I have to use a little bit of red for this one because you can't really see if I'm just using white. So let's pretend we have our flower and we'll pretend like it's the white flower. You can have it pink, I guess. Um, you're then going to put just a blotch of red in there and you want to try to make it round, but try not to make it consistent. like. It doesn't look the same on any of the sides. Then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna rotate with a brush stroke that goes around. Okay, and we'll make it a little bit more consistent. And you can change it up with the color a little bit if you wanna add a little bit of blue to this. To give it some shading, you could do that. Okay. Pretty simple. An easy flower for us to do. If you need to rotate your canvas, you could do that. That'll be fun for you to do. All right, so first, you just start off with your center inconsistent circle then you're gonna go ahead and make a uh, sort of a leaf I need to make this a little bit lighter you need a light pink really really light pink and we're just rotating it around see how you can see that I'm rotating it because of the angle of the brush And with this um, flower, we're gonna go over it a few times. So if it is not looking like you want it to look like right away, totally cool, because we're gonna go over it a few times. I like that line right there. I'm gonna keep it. Um, whenever you're making flowers, I always suggest that you go in the center and work your way out or anything that is round, like if you're working in a medalla or if you're painting a succulent, start in the center and work your way out. Okay, I'm actually going to use the square brush now. So now that I have some pink down, which um, I did have in my initial painting, um, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put some white in there. There we go. And you're just gonna press down, press down, press down. Okay, and then you're gonna work your way out. Oh, he's back, guys. Chewing on a bone. All right, 
and you'll notice that I need to go back over this. I'll do it a little later. Oops. And I'm going through the center and just making a few more of these lines. I guess it's more of a pinkish flower than a white. If I need to, I can go back over it later. Pretty simple we're just gonna keep repeating this flower um, I did this painting one night for a paint night and um, some students were using the back of their brush to make some of that uh, what is it called baby's breath so if you want to add that that would be cool Might look make it look pretty all right I'm gonna let this one dry a little bit and I might work my way back into it. We're now going to do a um, yellow centered one and I'm going to be using the same brush. I do need to clean it. And where is my... I can use my apron. Okay. So we're gonna start with yellow first on the inside. And if you wanna put yellow in this too, you can do that. You guys can do anything you want. Nobody's watching you. Here we go. I'm just gonna do my first initial brush strokes. I can bring some of that red in here. Then I can add some white to add some extra value to it. Or dimension, I guess. No, it's that value. When you're adding white or you're adding black, you're adding extra value. Okay, so this one kind of looks purpley. I think I'm gonna go with that. We'll do purple for this one. And we'll have maybe a red center or maybe just a yellow center, I'm not sure. We'll do that. Uh-oh, he's here. He wants attention, everyone. And if you want to add more flowers, go and do that. It's your, your painting. You get to decide. I'm going to add a dark center. Ooh, pretty. Look at that, changing it up. This is a very painterly style. Going around the flowers. I have like a lot of gray going on in that one. I have to change that all. Okay, I'm gonna go back over that one a little bit later. Maybe add some brush strokes of that color. All right, last one. 
because um, these ones are so centered and then these ones are far apart, I might go white up there or, hmm, I might just go red. I'll do red. I think that would look good. So let me just do that. So I have my yellow, my dirty brush. I need to clean that one. That's too dirty. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Okay, here we go. Going around, twisting the brush. Um, on my Lura Studio page, I, um, I have a payment option on it. It's not for this, these online paint nights. Um, when we are done with uh, this shelter in place thing, um, we can have paint nights. So uh, that might be something that you'd want to do later when we get out of this but uh, I don't know when that will be. This one has a little multicolor with an ugly green in it. Cool. Added a little black to that. Okay. Way to get rid of this. white. It's drying right now and I'll add a little bit of yellow to it. Okay. So, um, now that we have this, it's going to be time to freestyle. So you guys have lots of different options out there and I went over them. Um, you can go over the leaves that you have placed and maybe, um, enhance them a little bit, add, um, add extra, um, flowers if you want to if you want to do baby's breath I'm gonna do this in black you're gonna do stippling so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the end of your paintbrush you don't have to have a q-tip this actually works the best um, the end of a brush and just make little dots but make them in white don't go just do what I did with black or you know maybe it'll look pretty with a bunch of black stippling I'm not sure so um, right now, it's all about freestyling. I'm gonna add some yellow leaves in some areas because I think that's what I need um, in it. Like I'll put some yellow leaves down here and I'll put some yellow leaves up here and then maybe to break up the monotony over here, I'll put a few yellow leaves. We're doing some, uh, I guess we're putting together a bouquet right now so you want to make sure your bouquet is balanced, looks nice, and ready to give away. So, so I'm going to do some bright yellow leaves with a little bit of white because my yellow is translucent. And I guess my mom still does not have the kind that I bought her, but she has the neighbors which is cool. It's nice to be close to your neighbors. Well, in more ways than one, they're right next to you, right? And then just being able to have that relationship is nice. Oh, sorry if I'm down here. Cool. I'm going to do some ones down here.
I guess you can see, actually see through some leaves, right? So maybe that's just fine. Use my pointier brush for this because it's becoming a challenge. I can't wait to see what you guys came up with. Hopefully, your compositions are a little bit different, a little changed, more changed than what I did. Um, but if it's the same, it's cool too. You don't have to feel bad about it looking the same. I know some of you are a little bit scared uh, from this daunting white canvas, but typically when we paint it, it's not white anymore, so then we can just paint on it. Just do always do a layer first. Just to get your arms warmed up. kind of like stretching or doing a little warm up before you start exercising. Um, any of my um, paint nights are going to be on my YouTube channel. So if you want to um, paint any of the things that I have on there, you can do that. Uh, when I first started, I wasn't able to do it on or live stream on YouTube. So it's a little bit um, so those are on my, um, uh, other account, my Laura Studio Art on, on, uh, Facebook. So you can use that to look up some other paint nights if you wish. Um, you can do this paint night with your family if you like to. Um, I know that some families have been doing them with me uh, on a regular basis. It's kind of like their family night. If you want to do that, that's awesome. Um, I will be here on Saturdays at 2. If ever I'm not going to have one, I'll make sure I post that. But if I don't have one and you want to have one, you're all set up, you can do one of my old ones. Um, so yeah. Last week I posted a YouTube channel on how to do like a, an easy leaf painting. So if you want to check that out, you could do that too. All right. So um, what we're going to do now, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to make some baby's breath with the end of my paintbrush. I have to pour a little bit of white. So if any of you um, are a little bit scared to do it, you can see me do it first. I'm going to start out here. Probably can't see it that well. But it's going to be inconsi inconsistent with 
the way you lay it down. I'm gonna do some over here. I'll do it against the black so you can see it a little bit better. Typically I, I have two hours that I'm doing these, but I um, sometimes end them when I'm done with my painting and then you can keep working if you want to. You can always come back to a painting too. So if you don't like something, put it away and then come back to it later. polka dots. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna stick around for a little while while I do our painting and, um, and answer any questions. I'm looking at this a little bit higher, so I'm gonna change a few things. just look too consistent so I wanted to go over it. Cool. All right so I'm gonna stick around for a little while as you are painting um, and I will let you know if you need anything. Yes my painting is colorful. Is your painting colorful? Cool. So you can kind of see the end. I think I need some baby's breath up there. I'll do that. If you do not subscribe to my channel, if you want to, you can go ahead and do that right now so that you can um, you can get my any um, thing that I do with my students. You can see there. You can see what I do with my students. That your children can participate in any of my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, tutorials. So yeah. Spread the word of art. Everybody needs art in their life. Okay, so I'm going to leave this up for just a little bit longer and um, and if there aren't any questions in the next few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and close out. So thank you guys for participating with me. I appreciate you hanging out with me for the afternoon and painting.
Okay, well, there aren't any questions, um, but please subscribe so that you can see what we are doing in my classes or any t other tutorials that I have or if I have these paint night events later on. And please let me know if there's anything that you would like to paint. I had a few suggestions. I will get back to those people who did suggest them. And I look forward to seeing what you guys do. Please send me your paintings um, either on um, email, texting, or on my Lura Studio page. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. I don't know how to end it.